Hi guys, this is Ray Snow. Last time we implemented a pathfinding algorithm, so now monsters get aggro and start chasing us when we get too close to them. Creating an algorithm was kind of a huge task, so this time I want to do something lighter, easier stuff for a change. So in this video I will introduce two additional combat mechanics. And the first one just came to me a few days ago when I was fighting these slimes. I thought maybe it would be fun if I could cut these projectiles with my weapon, kind of like parrying enemy's attack. And I actually really liked the result, so I'll show you how I did it. And the first thing we do is changing this projectile list from array list to a uh, normal array. The reason that I chose array list in the first place is when it stores something like projectiles, the array's content is constantly changing. So I thought using array list is more convenient because you can just call add or remove to organize its content. But to make this cutting projectile feature, I realized that we need to call this check entity method. And since we have constructed our collision checker based on this normal array, we cannot pass array list. So that's why. But don't worry, everything will work just as before. We just need to add a few more lines to check which slot is vacant and stuff like that. So back to the game panel and let's fix these errors. So we need to change these from array list to normal array. So dimension one dot rings current map and i. Like this. Not to remove, but equal no. Okay, then go to the player class. And okay, here. So we cannot use this at method anymore. So delete this line. And instead we type like this. and break the loop. So basically we check which slot is vacant and put this projectile to the empty slot. Yeah, so we don't need this anymore. Now in this attacking method, we check if his attacking weapon is hitting any projectile or not. So we're gonna check projectile collision uh, int projectile index equal gp dot c checker dot check entity and this and here pass gp dot project tile then we're gonna call damage projectile or something and pass this index. So create this method and somewhere around here. Receive index. And okay, if I not equal 999. Uh, okay, so first entity projectile equal gp dot projectile current map and i and projectile dot alive equal false yeah so because this means you know player's weapon hit the projectile so this projectile dies and then Generate particle. 
we're gonna pass this projectile for both generator and the target. So actually this line is not really necessary. You know, if you want, you can just paste this here and here and here. So I just typed this line so, you know, the code can be more easy to read. And so yeah, we pass projectile to both generator and the target. So the particles show up where the projectile was. And uh, finally open this slime class. And here also we need to fix this error. Uh, instead, Okay, yeah, that's everything I think, so let's check. Oops, error. Where is it? Ah, okay, this one to draw method. Okay, uh, that's everything. Let's check. Okay. Come on. Yeah, like this. Come on. Oops. Yeah, so if you are facing the other way, then of course you cannot cut it. Yeah, so the timing is important. And if you want to increase the difficulty, so right now you can hit monsters or projectiles if it's uh, between counter 5 and 25, but uh, if you change this to like uh, 10 to 25 or 15 to 25, then uh, hitting window becomes narrower. So the timing is even more important. So if you prefer like challenging gameplay, then you can adjust these numbers. All right, so that's the first one. I started testing this just for fun, but uh, I like this because it gives you more strategic options to fight. So yeah, I hope you like it too. And the next one is adding knockback effect to your attack. So first go to the entity class and add these variables public boolean knockback call false and also public int default speed int knockback counter and then set this default speed value to the player and the slime and any other entities that you want to apply the knockback effect. So player and default speed. So default speed is 4 and we're gonna copy this default speed to speed and the slime default speed equal 1 we are gonna temporarily change these entities speed when they get knocked back so we need these default values to restore the original speed okay, then in this player class we create a method public void knock and we receive entity and then call this method when we hit a monster so yeah somewhere around here and knock back and pass this monster that we are hitting then inside of this knockback method we're gonna change this entity's direction to player's direction 
then we're gonna temporarily increase this entity's speed so for example like plus 10 and also we're gonna uh, change this entity's knockback boolean to true all right then go to this entity inside of this update and we're gonna create if statement so if knockback equal true and also else and we're gonna put so this set action check collision and uh, switch statement inside of this else statement in the case if this knockback is true we also check collision and then if collision on equal true then we're gonna reset this knockback counter because you know we need to stop this knockback effect if it hits a solid tile or other objects otherwise we can push this entity into a solid tile or a solid object and so if collision is true we reset uh, knockback counter and also change this knockback boolean to false and also we're gonna restore its original speed this and else if collision on equal false then we can move this entity and we're gonna use switch statement here and here the condition is not this entity's direction but player's direction because this entity needs to move to the direction that the player is facing and inside we can just copy this switch statement and finally we're gonna increase knockback counter and uh, if it hits a certain number for example like 10 then we stop this knockback so we reset the counter reset the boolean and also restore the, the original speed yeah kinda we are typing the same thing here but I guess it's okay so that's everything I think and basically more you increase this number the more the knockback distance increases okay let's check right okay Oops. Oof. yeah okay i think so now we can knock back these rhymes and to make this more interesting we can set the uh, knockback power on each weapon you know for example some weapons have strong knockback power and some weapons don't or something like that so i'll show you some examples inside of this entity we're gonna create public int knockback power or something and right now we're using a sword, axe, and a fireball to attack. So let's set this knockback power on them. And knockback power like 10. Copy. And this sword, 
a lot it's like two so just a little bit you know axe has better knockback power and fireball fireball okay so knock, knock power and the fireball has zero knockback power for example okay then in this player class so when we attack a monster we pass the current weapons knockback power and so you're gonna receive this knockback power int knockback power and uh, okay also projectile uh, projectile so here as well we're gonna pass this projectiles knockback power then uh, play a class we check this received knockback power is greater than zero so if it has a knockback power then we're gonna call this method knockback method and also pass this knockback power and okay so here we receive knockback power and uh, instead of typing this manual number we use this knockback power to increase its speed all right for testing let me disable slimes you know projectile okay so first we're gonna use this normal sword all right let's attack yeah so this has a little knockback power let's switch to the axe yeah so this weapon has a better knockback power yeah. hmm and now let's use the fireball yeah so this fireball has no knockback power yeah like this so this is just one example and you can set any condition to call this knockback method and apply the knockback effect for example you can create a knockback skill and call this knockback method only when you hit a certain key or you know use the skill or something like that anyway that's all for now so now we can cut their projectiles and uh, push them back when we attack with a certain weapon or a projectile so i hope you enjoyed this episode Thanks for watching and until next time.